In just over, let's see, four hours from now, China is set to launch its Shenzhou 21 mission to the Tiangong Space Station. This is just the latest stage of the growing space race between the U.S. and China. The three crew members were announced yesterday, and it includes the program's youngest astronaut. This is interesting. Four mice will also join the mission to be used in reproduction experiments. The crew will spend about six months in space. To talk more about China's space program, I'm joined by Lincoln Hines. He's an assistant professor at the Sam Nunn School of International Affairs at Georgia Tech. Good morning and welcome, Lincoln. So help us understand how important, how crucial China's space advancements are considering its hopeful dominance to what the, where the U.S. used to lead and how Chinese nationalism is also wrapped into this. Yes, so China's space program um, dates back all the way to the late 1950s, but it has made considerable progress over the last couple of decades and has achieved several milestones, um, perhaps most prominently China's success in having a human space program and completing construction of its own space station in low Earth orbit. And this is also important because there are currently plans to deorbit the International Space Station. So should this continue to, to go through, then this would suggest China may have the only space station in orbit. And so China's pursuit of these capabilities does a lot of things. It shows to China's domestic audiences uh, that China is uh, reasserting its position in the international stage. Um, it's an important sign of national pride and a way that the Chinese Communist Party tries to present itself as legitimate to domestic audiences. But of course, um, nationalism is only one component. There are several other very important motives uh, driving China's space ambitions from security to development. Right. And when we talk about development, they could create mega constellations of satellite. They could leap ahead in deep space science. I mean, these were or are areas the U.S. hopes to lead, but the U.S. space program is aging. It's relying more on private companies to help get into the sky. And China says it's on track to land on the moon by 2030. So as we kind of just do a, a gut check on this space race, where are we? Um, I think it's important to, first of all, to distinguish the different types of space capabilities and the purposes they serve. China is making very notable strides in these really high profile, flashy accomplishments. Um, and it is possible that China could end up beating the United States back to the moon. However, it's important to think about what space capabilities do. It's a very different geopolitical context than we, the one we were in during the Cold War. We've, been, had, we've had humans operating in space for decades. It may not have the same symbolic weight that it once had. A lot of this will depend uh, on American domestic politics, um, about how people uh, perceive this and what it means for the U.S. But it's important not to forget that there's a lot of really important capabilities that serve military functions and also are important for development. And the U.S. has actually made several important strides in these areas. Uh, the U.S. leads China right now in being able to develop these these proliferated mega constellations like Starlink. Um, and the United States also leads through innovation in the private sector in developing reusable launch vehicles. So I think these are very important uh, markers of progress, though they may not be quite as flashy as some of the um, areas where China has made some notable strides in recent years. Really interesting. Lincoln Hines joining us from Atlanta. We appreciate your insight this morning.